Hey everybody, Aaron Bishop here with another Bishop's Blurb. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. We are saved by faith through grace. We know this as a central tenet of Christianity. We don't earn our salvation. Salvation is something that is gifted to us by grace through faith. But what does it mean to have faith? faith. In the modern world, we tend to pass off the word faith as mental assent to a series of ideas that can't be proven. Do you believe in your mind that Jesus died on the cross, rose on the third day, and was witnessed by many people? Do you really believe without proof? Well, then you're good. You have faith. Congratulations! But mental assent we find elsewhere, it's not enough. James 2.19 says, you believe that God is one and you do well. But even the demons believe, and they shudder. Simply knowing a series of facts without proof, that's not enough for salvation. There's more to this process than simple mental assent. So rather than anachronistically imposing modern ideas of what faith is upon the text and then interpreting the Bible through that lens, let's instead look back and see if we can discover what the word would have meant to the original audience. Now what I'm going to provide today is a summary of a book written by Matthew W. Bates called Salvation by Allegiance Alone. We catch our first glimpse of what faith might mean when we turn to the Webster's Dictionary and we look up the word faith. You'll find that the very first entry in Webster's Dictionary, Webster's.com, is the idea of allegiance or loyalty. Now this definition of the word faith has almost entirely passed out of meaning for the modern word faith. And yet when we look at primary and secondary sources in the Old Testament period, we find that this was the primary meaning of the word faith, or pistis, or pisteo in Greek. So let's look at some documents outside of Scripture and see if we can find the way that this word is used. In Josephus' Antiquity of the Jews, we read this. Moreover, this Antiochus bear testimony to our piety and fidelity. That's the word pistis right there. In an epistle of his, written when he was informed of a sedition in Phrygia and Lydia. Now the word fidelity in that passage is the word pistis. And in this context, it's talking about people who remained faithful to the king in the midst of a rebellion. Another example is found in 1 Maccabees chapter 10, verse 26 through 28. Whereas ye have kept covenants with us and continued in our friendship, not joining yourselves to our enemies, we have heard hereof and are glad. Wherefore now continue ye still to be faithful, pisteo, to us, and we will well recompense you for the things that you do on our behalf, and we will grant you many immunities and give you many rewards. In this passage, a pagan king Demetrius, the man who overthrew Alexander V of Macedonia, he ruled in Syria for a time, and he made this offer to the victorious Jews after they defeated Antiochus Epiphanes and declared their own freedom from the Seleucid Empire. He says, in essence, remain faithful to me, keep that covenant that you have with me, and you will be granted many immunities and great rewards. This promise is based upon their continued pistis of the kings of Israel. And finally, Teresa Morgan writes in her book, Roman Faith and Christian Faith, Pistis and Fides in the Early Roman Empire and Early Churches. In this book, she states that the oath that was sworn by Roman soldiers was based on fidelis, which is the closest Latin equivalent to the Greek word pisteo. She recounts that in this context, it was continued fidelity that the soldiers swore to uphold, and this promise was not to be a one-time decision, but one that was to last the entirety of the time frame of the oath, duration of the campaign, or their time of service. All of that to say that saving faith is not simply a set of ideas that a person must assent to. You can agree all day long with a series of facts and you don't have saving faith. Rather, saving faith is a declaration of allegiance to the kingdom of heaven and to its king, Jesus.